Well, now that we've got the basic background and layout selected for our presentation, let's go ahead and continue creating some slides and placing some different content on them. For the next slide, I want to go ahead and have a table on the slide. So I'm going to come up here to new slide again and I'm going to click the bottom half of that slide so that I get my different layout options here. And I'm going to go ahead and select title and content again. Now this is the exact same layout that we chose for this particular slide. And you'll see we still have click to add title. I'm going to click there and I'm going to type sample PowerPoint whoops, table. And then I'm going to click down here where it says click to add text and you can see I could begin typing a bulleted list again. Now if I go ahead and type in some sample text, you're going to see that these little icons that were there in the middle disappear. I'm going to delete that and you'll see they come back. Basically what this layout allows you to do is create one general layout that you can use with bulleted lists, but that you can also work with tables charts, smart art graphics, pictures from your um, computer, clip art from the Microsoft library, or a media clip like a movie. So one layout gives you seven different choices for the different kinds of content that you can place on the slide. I'm going to go ahead and select this option right here, insert table. And you're going to see it's going to ask me the number of rows and the number of columns. And I'm going to go ahead and select four columns, and I'm just going to start off with um, three rows. And click OK, and there is my table. I'm going to go ahead and click in the table, and I can simply begin to type information in. Now, if you're familiar with tables in Microsoft Word, all the skills you learned in those Word tables are going to translate over into your PowerPoint. So you may want to take advantage of some of our uh, video tutorials on working with Word tables and then apply them here inside of um, Microsoft PowerPoint. Also, if you've worked with Microsoft Excel, some of those skills will come in handy. Now, PowerPoint's table um, tools aren't as robust as Microsoft Word's table tools are. And they also don't have the flexibility when it comes to equations and functions that an Excel worksheet would have. So if you've got a very complicated table, I would recommend you create that table in Word, get it set up and formatted the way you want, and then just simply copy and paste it into your PowerPoint and make some final adjustments for the size. If you have a table that's going to have equations inside of it, I would recommend that you use Microsoft Excel for that because it's much easier to work with equations and formulas in Excel than it is inside of Microsoft PowerPoint. And again, you can simply copy and paste the table over um, and then make adjustments in PowerPoint, your final adjustments inside of PowerPoint. But PowerPoint's table tools um, work very well for what they were intended for, simple, straightforward tables. And that's what we're going to go ahead and create um, here. I'm going to go ahead and type in name and then fall, spring, summer. When I hit tab, it's going to bring me down to the next row, but over to the first column. So I can go ahead and type name in there. And fall, I'm going to go ahead and type 3.2. Spring, we'll do 3.4 or 3.5. And summer, 4.0. So we're giving their grade point averages here. And obviously, this is just a fictitious table. And I'll go ahead and type Mary, and we'll do her values. Now, when I come to the end of a table, and this is true for Word or PowerPoint, if I press Tab again, as I've been doing to move from cell to cell, it will automatically create a new row for me. So I can continue to type in information. Peter's not doing as well as his friends. If I mistakenly hit tab and add an extra row in, the easiest way to undo that mistake is just simply to use the undo command. And I can do that just simply by coming up here in the upper left hand corner and clicking. And you're going to see that that disappears. Now, 
just as you were able to select a theme and a color scheme for your tables, you can also, I'm sorry, for your um, slides, you can also adjust the um, settings and the theme for your tables within your slide. Now I want you to notice I have a section up here called Table Tools. You're only going to see that section in the ribbon when you're actually inside of a table. If I was to go over to this other slide here, there's no table, so I don't have any table tools. If I come back to this slide, you're still going to see that there's no table tools up here at the top. It's only when you've actually clicked inside of a table that you see those commands. And again, I'm going to come here to the Design tab, and you're going to see some different options that we can choose from here. Hovering over them will give you a preview of what they're going to look like. You can see there's a scroll bar here with a drop down arrow at the bottom. I could simply click that drop down, or I'm sorry, I can click the scroll bars and you'll see I get additional choices. Or I can click this drop down and you're going to see I see all of my choices, or a large number of my choices, all at the same time. And again, if I hover over a style, you'll see it change in the background. So you just have to find the style that you like. I'm going to go ahead and pick this blue style right here. And then click on it, and now you've got your table. And again, even though I was in all caps, it realized that the P here isn't capitalized. So it's giving me a spelling mistake here. That bothers me, so I'm going to right-click on it and choose PowerPoint just like that. So you can see how we've got a nice table here. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to customize this table a little bit for PowerPoint.